Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sun Up on Seven. It's Monday, and thank you so much for starting your week and your day with us. I hope that everybody enjoyed the the Monday morning beef conversation with Jules. Of course, it was steamy. There was a lot of uh, conversation going on that are insightful. That I hope that you can carry on and continue engaging with your group. That's the only way how we get democracy, how we get transparency, and how we keep on evolving as a society. It's time for our first conversation with our guest from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And we're talking about the Pfizer vaccines for children 5 to 11 years. We know that they arrived on Saturday in Belize. So let's talk about the many things that the audience have been asking. What are the side effects? Uh, is it safe for children? And of course, why should children be taking this vaccine? It's here. We know COVID is still here. We're in the fourth wave of COVID. So vaccines have really helped to pave the way for us to reduce our restrictions, for us to go back to some sense some some sort of normalcy. So now let's make our children safer. So to have this conversation with us, we have um, nurse administrator, nurse Do Donaldine Lizama, and Dr. Elsie Constanza, who's a pediatrician. Um, good morning to you both. How are you doing, Dr. Constanza? I'm doing fine, thank doing you. Doing fine? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and bringing this good news and this insight for our parents that are watching today's show. Um, Dr. Nurse Lizama, how are you feeling? I'm okay. You're okay? I'm good. How are you feeling this Monday? This early morning, Monday morning. The last Monday in May. <laughs> well, um, I had to get up early this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's our fault. Thank you, though. <laughs> yeah. But thank you, thank you both for taking the time to, to be here with us. Right, so let's get started with the conversation. Yes. So first off, it's great news to be able to have this vaccine. I know we've been talking about the conversation a lot of times about when we're going to get vaccines for children 5 to 11 because they were the only ones that weren't being protected as yet. And so now Saturday... We have our shipment and everything coming in. Can we talk a little bit first about why children need to be taking this vaccine? And then we can go into the safety measures because I think parents need to understand the need as to why. I think their, their stance is, you know, my child might not get it. They're wearing their mask. I'm not worrying about it or so forth. And there's a lot of speculation along that line. But could you please explain to me on why it is so important from 5 to 11, this new vaccine, for these children. Dr. Elsie? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, well, we uh, should be happy, I would say, that uh, we have the opportunity to have the, the vaccines here in Belize. All right. And now, um, with the aid of Ministry of Health and Wellness, that um, now they procured uh, a load of, of these vaccines. No? That around uh, 125,000 doses came in, I think, on, on Saturday. So 85% of that 5 to 11 population. Yes. Yeah. We have uh, around um, 73, a little bit more than 73,000 uh, kids, children between the ages of uh, 5 to 11, okay, who would um, need the, the vaccination, the, 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 this vaccine. Um, which means that a total dose more or less taking in consideration all the wastage and uh, a buffer no? a percentage, it would be most, more or less like 160,000 mm -hmm. uh, doses. And what came in uh, was uh, 125,000 doses. So we're so, close to the mark. Yes, but um, I am sure that the Ministry of Health is also procuring the other percentage mm -hmm. needed, right? Yes. So it, it is um, something that... Um, Belize is fortunate to have uh, at this moment. Uh, many countries don't have this opportunity right now, especially for children uh, between 5 to, to 11 years, and especially with Pfizer vaccine, where one dose is like $20 US per dose. All right. So um, let's move now, just talking about why it's in, important now. Um, well, what we've seen so far, well, the trends and what we've learned so far in these, uh, what, two, three years from 2019 to now, um, is that, the, of course, fortunately, uh, the children are the least affected, okay, age group, okay, um, uh, which I'm, I'm glad, you know, that um, this has happened. And here in Belize, if you see data, uh, the data shows, of course, that um, the, the most, uh, the, the age group that has a, the highest hospitalization and death, uh, of course, are 50, 50 years and over. Right. But what happened to this uh, age group of between uh, uh, 5 to 11? Um, they, are, they, they, of course, get sick. They get infected as well. All right. 
But fortunately, they don't uh, show uh, severe um, uh, symptoms now. And um, that has been low compared to the other, other age groups. Um, but this age group, children of these uh, children, um, they, are, they can be very asymptomatic, but they can be the carriers, they can be the, the spreaders, you know, yeah. of, the, of, the, of the virus. So um, that's where this vaccine is also important. Apart from, of course, the, the, the vaccine uh, has the same effect as an adult, that it tries, it will bring down the, 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 the immune response as, as to say the severity, no? Uh, of the of the of the um, infection no? in these children, so the, uh, children who uh, receive the vaccine would tend to have a less uh, uh, severe response no? to the infection. Okay, so it won't it won't be that um, significant or shouldn't be that no uh, severe. And um, as well, they will if we vaccinate this age group, uh, plus we add all of all, or you know, age group that are, have been vaccinated, it attributes or contributes to the herd immunity as well. Okay. You know, so it is even better for for the community, for the population, for all of us. You know, so um, we can at the at the same time or at the uh, maybe the objective at the end or would be that um, if we have a a good percentage, you know, and a herd immunity achieved. Uh, the virus will eventually, uh, what we call the virulence, the, the aggressiveness of the virus would eventually decrease. Maybe the mutations would be less aggressive as how we are seeing right now. And uh, maybe thanks to the vaccine, the, the, the vaccine, the vaccination that has been going on now for adults. And so vaccinating kids now, you know, especially this age group that are the spreaders, uh, let's say the silent spreaders, well, they, um, this would just even help more, all right? So um, those are uh, the advantages, you know, and the benefits of having this age group being um, vaccinated. I really thank you for talking mm -hmm. about the fact that they are can, can be the spreaders because you even think about mm -hmm. it, that at that age, they're very huggy, they're touchy and everything, and they go around everybody, gram, everybody they go around. And they can be asymptomatic and because of that they're more likely a chance of them being able to spread it to other people right when you yeah. do not know that they have it yeah what also the cdc has said especially as it regards to uh the ba2 variant of covid um which uh, the ministry of health has said that that attributes to the current wave that we're on is that children are more susceptible to this uh viral strain in comparison to the other ones um can you speak in regards to that as to because I think like that's that's the awareness also that we need to draw to parents like what the current um, wave is attributed to what which is BA two and how it affects children. Is there anything you can contribute to that conversation, Doc? Yeah, uh, you see, probably, and then and this is um, um, what we are seeing right now with Omicron, that you said rightly, yeah. uh, it it is affecting more kids. We see children more, you know, more, um, more, most less sick of, uh, of this um, uh, COVID, of this variant. Um, but it can be largely attributed because they are not vaccinated. Okay. All right. Um, when it comes like other, the other the previous variants, of course, uh, the adults were the ones mostly affected. But now that we've uh, achieved, at least here in Belize, so far around uh, 68%, if not that mistaken, in Nurse Lizama, of, um, of vaccination um, coverage now in, in, in our population. Um, but still, we, we need to go more now, at least achieve a 95% coverage. And we won't achieve this until we have this group of children being vaccinated. Right, because our population mm -hmm. demographics, we have a lot of young persons, right? So yes. it's, it's a challenge getting to that 70 80% threshold given that this age group needs to get vaccinated. Yes. Right. And, and you see that despite too that um, this uh, wave uh, affected more or is affecting actually more um, children, uh, these children aren't presenting uh, severe symptoms. All right. So um, that's a, a plus two. All right. right. We can see how, how um, um, the ch these children can, are... are how are they responding no, to, to, to this wave, all right, of this variant? Um, but imagine if they would be vaccinated, all right? If it would, it, we would have 
lower down, uh, of course, the, 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 the incidence na of um, this age group being infected. And not only that, as I mentioned before, but the, the herd immunity, we would achieve it even quicker, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so, and then these children would be, um, I would say, more free to do activities together, you know, to go back to school, um, uh, etc. cetera, no? Because one of the biggest fear of parents, I remember at first, was sending their children to school. Yes, and it's still a fear right. right now, especially it, knowing that, you know, this is the age range that's a little bit more affected by um, Omicron right. B. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the side effects because I think that is a conversation a lot of people right. have been worrying about when it comes to what could be the possible side effects for these children if they do um, get the vaccine. Yeah. So, okay. there's Azama. The most common is the, the local side effects, the pain, the swelling, um, when to the injection site. And then there are other um, generalized side effects like um, headache, nausea, fever, chills. It's the same side effects that the adults or the okay. children 12 to 17 are experiencing. So it's nothing no new under the sun or whatever it is. It's basically around the same thing. Yes, around the same thing. Yeah. There's some I want to ask you about how does the, the vaccine work? So is it a one dose, a double dose? Um, can, you, can you give us the, the logistics behind, behind how the vaccination works for children 5 to 11 years? Well, this vaccine... Um, it's a lower dose than the one that we are previously given. It's a 10 microgram vaccine. Okay. The children get two doses, three weeks apart, just like adults and children 12 to, to 17. Also, if the child is immunocompromised, then three doses um, are recommended, and the child will get the third dose um, 28 days after the second or a month after the second dose. Okay. So that's the only case where three doses are recommended if the child might have a, um, a cancer condition, or organ transplant, if the child is on a certain medication. Be HIV positive. Too. HIV positive, then that child get three doses of the vaccine. Okay. Yeah. And in regards to COVID too as well, is, is it the same thing if the child has already um, contracted COVID, then they don't have to take it as yet? What's that conversation like too as well? Because I know for people that had already... Um, but COVID. COVID, they didn't have to take the vaccine. They had to wait that, six months. Yeah, something. six months or so. So if that child did, in, in fact, have COVID, what are you going to be saying to the parents out there now in regards to that? The, the recommendation from Ministry of Health is for that child to get the vaccine one month after the diagnosis of COVID-19. Okay. As well that... Um, um, the side effects, you know, regardless mm -hmm. if, the, if the baby or the, ch the child presented any of these side effects that Nurse Lezama mentioned, uh, it's not a contraindication to receive uh, the second dose. Right. Okay, so here when we speak about uh, vaccination, especially the Pfizer vaccine, which is the one that is recommended, has been approved or authorized to use in the, this age group, um, uh, there's a, only a primary uh, dose right now, primary schedule, okay, or dose, which is um, the two doses, you know, one and the first one, and then the second one should be at least uh, three weeks, you know, three weeks after the first dose. That's a, both two doses is a primary, like the primary schedule, okay? There's no booster so far. Okay. Okay, in, in, in for this, for this age, age group. Okay. Uh, and as um, how Nurse Zama had mentioned too, immunocompromised children, they would need a third primary dose, okay? Uh, at least one, um, yeah, one month, four weeks after the second dose. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. So, um, thanks for that, Doug. Um, Nurse Zama, I want to ask you about the, how, how the rollout of the vaccine is, is, is going to happen. So, um, we read from the press release from the Ministry of Health that you're in collaboration with the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. to being able to um, disseminate the information as it regards to the COVID vaccine, how the dosages work, and of course, to get the parental consent. Um, can you give us more insight in, and, as to what the rollout is? Well, for the past two weeks, we have been meeting with um, teachers and parents in all the schools. So we, ha we have been having PTA meetings face-to-face -face and virtually. Um, the outcome has been very good, I would say. Parents have a lot of questions. Of course. Yes. And we try to answer as best as possible. And starting this week, 
we will be going into the schools. We have schedules set up um, that was made by the Ministry of Education and we go into the schools, but the parent has the option of having their children or child vaccinated at school, but they can also bring them to the fixed vaccination sites if they want. And we have um, several vaccination sites open in the, in the city. We have the Central Health Region, we have Matron Roberts, we have Port Loyola, um, is a vaccination site in Ladyville. Okay. And then we have the Keys, Kikaka and San Pedro. So parent has the okay. choice, whether they- just to, just to confirm, this is rolling out countrywide or is it countrywide. going districts? districts? Mm -hmm. So countrywide is yeah. all one country rollout. Mm -hmm. Great, um, roll out. perfect. And okay. then also um, the parents can have that option of doing the consent form right there and there, right? Because there are some parents too as well. Because I know there's a consent form. There's involved. a consent form, yes. So, mm -hmm. especially for this age range, 5 to 11, they can't just take this out of taking the sake. That's, mm -hmm. they, know, have, they have to sign the, 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 the consent. Mm -hmm. We will not vaccinate a child without the consent form being signed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One question that parents uh, have, a, they ask if this is effective, you know, if it makes sense to vaccinate their child or not. You know, uh, well, so far, uh, research shows that it's 91% effective, all right, to, to um, lower the risk, you know, of infection and the, 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 the uh, severity of the infection too in, in this age group, all right? Great. So that's awesome. Uh, so that's, that's really good news that it's 91%. 91%, yes. Parents need, need, need to be able to hear this and, and uh, being aware that it reduces the severity of the symptoms. It makes your, ch your child being able to pass through this hurdle because we've seen a lot of people going through moments of grief because of COVID. So we want our children to be safe. As, as you mentioned, they could be silent spreaders. So we want to keep also like our households safe. Mm -hmm. um, so we announced that we're running out of time on, on this conversation. So I want to thank you both um, for being here, educating us about the COVID vaccine as it regards to children 5 to 11 years. As a wrap up, do you have any last words? Uh, Doc? Well, I, I would encourage parents to do so, all right? Uh, I would encourage them to, to take their child, to take the decision. No? It's up to them. The decision is, is up to the, um, to the parent no? to, to vaccinate their child, all right? Uh, the ministry here in Belize was, is just offering it to this age group. Uh, but I would encourage parents to, to go ahead. Um, the, uh, the very, uh, the, um, the, um, let's say the severity of uh, side effects, you know, uh, not, not the, the, the um, uh, what the side effects that Nurse Elizama mentioned, but I'm uh, talking about um, like allergic uh, anaphylactic reactions and so forth, those severe side severe effects. They, ha they are very, very rare, actually, very rare, okay? So um, if uh, I would encourage parents and if they need more information, you know, they, there are web websites, you know, available uh, in the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. their website from the CDC, from the American Academy of Pediatrics, you know, where they can get more information. Research, they can right? ask their pediatrician as well, you know, for more information if they don't feel quite um, uh, comfortable. comfortable yet, Definitely. no? But I do encourage them to, okay. to vaccinate their child. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Dr. Nurse Zawa. Um, also, if, if do you, are you aware of the expiration date of this vaccine? Because I think that's important too for people to hey, like uh, realize the the how Sometimes the, the importance of the urgency to go and get vaccinated. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's 2023. 2023. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's good. But um, also, I want to just um, reiterate what Doctor said. Um, I encourage parents to bring up their children to get vaccinated. Um, it will get them back into the, their normal routine. I mean, they can go back to school on um, five days a week instead of just two that we are seeing now. And it, make them, it will make them safe. And I want the parents to know that the team at the schools will consist of doctors and nurses. So we will be observing the children for at least um, 15 to 20 minutes at school before they go back into, into their classroom. Okay. And we have not had any severe reaction, um, as doctor said, with the 12 to 17 age group. It's very rare. Okay. And if we do, we are prepared to, to deal with those reactions at school. Okay. All right. Thank mm -hmm. I just want to add or ask, sorry, um, some people are asking just again the vaccination spots. They can go on the Ministry of Health and Wellness and they can be able to have all of the different vaccination spots for the children. Um, revealed there, right? So they can be able to go. Because there's some people that are asking for Bilma Pan and so forth um, to know where they can be able to go and vaccinate their children. 
So the Ministry of um, Health and Wellness will be able to have that on their Facebook page. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and, and um, they will communicate to, to through, throughout the media, houses and, and the schools especially, all right? So they will eventually get that information, all right? And that's uh, for both our urban and rural areas, all right? Because this is spreading throughout, throughout the country. Perfect. Right? So definitely going to be visiting your city, your town, your village, wherever it is. And remember, ask as much questions as you can possibly ask, you know, mm -hmm. don't be afraid. I know they're going to bombard you with questions, but it's important because they need to make, uh, you know, a knowledgeable, a knowledgeable um, decision. And so it's yes. super important that if you don't understand, ask. Be able to bring the research, whatever research they had to come and say, that this is what I learned or whatever it is, but have that open conversation. So we're so thankful that you're able to have us, you know, have that conversation about what's happening with this Pfizer vaccine. Remember guys, 5 to 11, the vaccine is finally out. Check out Ministry of Health and Wellness page to know where it's going to be rolled out. Have conversation with your teachers and your schools to know exactly you know, what's going to be happening. And remember, ask the questions that are needed. So again, thank yes. you so much, ladies, for being here. We really thank appreciate you it. Thank you. And with that, we go to our next commercial break. When we're back, we're going to be talking about another... We're going to be talking different things when it comes to Belize High School. Stay tuned for the exciting conversation. We'll be right back.